Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful 24 channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. At the Bluff House, Finn says thanks to Taylor for assisting Steffi and the children with getting settled abroad. All he needs is some home with him. Taylor cautions he's hazardously near losing Steffi and needs to give his very best for get Sherlock Carter out of his life. Taylor can figure out the mother-slash-child bond, yet not why Finn would support it after all that has worked out. However long Shayla believes that he cherishes her, or that he believes she's his mom, she's never escaping your life. At Minister's place, he requests that Shayla stay, regardless of whether it's only for somewhat longer. She inquires, what are you talking about? Elder asks her not to go, he would rather not be distant from everyone else. At Forrester, Edge tells Brooke he's informing Steffi to beware of her. Brooke muses, Aw, oh, you miss her. Edge gripes about her being so distant, and we as a whole know why. Brooke realizes how stressed he's been over Steffi and the children with Shayla running free once more. Edge generally thought Finn was a decent counterpart for his little girl. However, this association with his introduction to the world mother, he can't grasp it. Brooke doesn't know accusing Finn is fair. Edge believes he's causing Shyla to feel like they could have a relationship. Brooke believes he's clarified that he doesn't need that, yet Edge contends that he embraced her. The main way Edge can safeguard his girl conveys a really lengthy prison sentence. This depends on Finn. At the precipice house, Finn tells Taylor she's right. Shayla has done terrible things to the family, and he never ought to have given her any expectation they could have a relationship. I ought to have defined a boundary all along. Taylor says now is the right time to draw one now, and urges Finn to battle for Steffi and the children. It doesn't matter to me what you need to do, Finn. It doesn't make any difference. Simply get Shayla out of your life. Taylor tells Finn she's passing on to go check in with Edge. Finn vows to do what she's inquired. Taylor instructs him to do it for Steffi. He requests that she let Steffi in on the amount he adores her and how hard he's battling to get them home. Taylor will, yet he needs to begin truly battling and let Shayla in on that she's not permitted in his life or his kids' lives. She's a beast and will utilize anything that she can to control him. The second you show shortcoming is the second she wins. She gets power out of getting into individuals' brains and controlling. That's what the second she does, you will lose everything. Finn gets it. Taylor finishes up. Make her disappear for good. At Minister's place, Shayla's head is turning after so much has happened today. It's only one out of every odd day that a young lady finds she has a divine messenger. Elder grins at being called this and yields. I helped a bit. Shayla spouts that she's never had anybody care about her like that. Elder tells her they've forever been the dark horses, the convicts, who have needed to work two times as hard as every other person to excel. They can compose their own story, a superior one. Here and at this moment, Shayla grins. Minister gets on the telephone and makes a few plans for a little shock. He inquires as to whether she confides in him. Shayla murmurs, You realize I do, Daddy. Minister pronounces the two of them merit something particularly amazing and drives her out the entryway. At Forrester, Brooke pours Edge's chest and lets him know they ought to return home, get in the bath, and she will make every one of his concerns disappear. They're canoodling when Taylor thumps and enters. Edge inquires as to whether all is well with Steffi. She says it is, taking into account she left her significant other and everybody she adores. Brooke says it's been no picnic for every one of them. Taylor notes, both of you are by all accounts doing fine and dandy. Edge embraces Taylor and asks when she got in. She says she got in toward the beginning of today and needed to mind Thomas and deal with a couple of different things. Steffi and the children are fine, taking everything into account. Kelly adores the global school and Hayes is taking everything in. Edge is happy she was there to comfort them subsequent to being removed. Taylor and Edge concur that for however long Finn's there, Shayla's staying put. Taylor says she swung by to tell Finn he needs to give his best for get Shayla out of their lives, 
My God, he simply has to battle back. He needs to persuade her that he doesn't adore her. How is this even possible? Sheila Carter isn't lovable. At Il Giardino, Minister has a heartfelt supper set up ready for Sheila. She learns they have the spot all to themselves, and nobody will irritate them. Shayla wonders that he's remade the date they had months prior. He generally understands what she really wants. Shayla reminds him they made a deal to avoid seeing each other any longer. Minister tells her they won't do that this evening. This evening is about her, the extraordinary and energetic lady who stumbled her direction into his life. Shayla spouts, you get me. I don't need to be anything more yet myself. Minister accepts individuals can change, and everybody merits an opportunity to attempt. Sheila goes over the amount he's finished for her. She truly could get an opportunity at a relationship with her child. She's so frantic to have an existence with Finn and Hayes. However, I need an existence with you as well. That truly does make me insane, doesn't it? According to Minister, that doesn't make you insane by any means. He kisses her. At the Forrester Manor, R.G. walked about the family room. Donna got back from monitoring Eric and said that Eric was resting. R.G. rehashed his longing to let Edge know what was the deal with Eric. Donna told R.G. that Eric would feel double-crossed if R.G. left working with Eric. You're giving him trust. You're providing him drive and motivation. Donna made sense of. Donna asked R.G. not to abandon his granddad. In the leader office at Forrester Manifestations, Brooke, Carter and Edge attempted to comprehend the reason why and how Eric had been burning through such a lot of cash on his arranged last assortment. Carter chose to go to his work area to redo the math and check whether there was a method for limiting the necessary slices to level out Eric's overspending. Afterward, Brooke let Edge know that she could see the cost his fight with Eric was taking on him. Edge asked why Eric would put RJ in their disagreement. I can explain to you why, father, RG said from the entryway. RG ventured into the workplace and shut the entryway behind him. Edge explained that he was glad that RG was planning with Eric, yet added that he had to be aware assuming there was something going on with Eric. Brooke guaranteed her child that he could let them know anything. RJ recollected his discussion with Donna and reconsidered breaking Eric's certainty. Grandad requirements to do this assortment. I think you really want to give him the help that he wants and the help that he merits, R.G. said anxiously. Alone at the ocean side house, a pitiful Finn got a toy from the floor and recollected more joyful times with Steffi and the children. He was awakened back to the current when he heard the front entryway shutting. He pivoted to find a somewhat bothered tailor standing a couple of feet away. You know, you may be the main individual who doesn't need to stress over locking the entryway when Shayla Carter's running wild, Taylor said straight. Finn was astounded to see Taylor in Los Angeles. Taylor expressed that she had gotten back to talk some sense into Finn. Finn and Taylor plumped down in the family room to talk. Taylor encouraged Finn to begin making the strides expected to bring Steffi home. Thanks for watching if you like this video. So please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.